Hello and welcome to another blog entry from voiceinitiate.com Today I'm going to be discussing how to investigate a very popular issue in Cisco IP telephony. The main focus of today's entry is geared towards presenting a very easy method for investigating one-way or no-way audio issues. If you've ever encountered one-way or no-way audio before, you'll know that about 90% of the time it's network related. But the problem is, how does one prove it when the routing and switching team thinks it's a call manager issue. Hopefully by the end of this entry anyone watching will be able to answer this question without any problems. The reason I'm making this blog is because I was planning to write a blog on a case of no audio between an internal user behind a VPN and a remote user calling into the network via an ISDN30 trunk. But then I thought if I write this blog field of traces and debugs along with the side commentaries. How about viewers who might be curious about how I gathered or generated the traces and logs in the first place. As a result of this, I thought I'd make two video blog entries before releasing the main blog entry. The first video is what we'll be talking about today and the next one will involve analyzing core manager traces and H323 gateway debugs to show core, the core flow. I will also be using a very good trace analyzer in upcoming entry. Okay, before we move further, let's spend one minute to talk about what really happens in the background when two Cisco IP phones are talking to each other. Right, a quick overview of the core signaling and setup and core teardown. So basically we have three entities in this call. We have the first phone, phone A, we have the call manager sitting in the middle and we have um, the second phone, phone B, which is sitting at the other end. Um, so you, as you can see here, have a couple of arrows. The first arrows represents the signaling that occurs between this phone and the call manager and this fo and phone B and the call manager to set up the initial audio stream that they then exchange during the conversation. This yellow arrow here represents the actual audio stream. This red signal in here represents the signaling again that involves in a call teardown, a breakdown of the call when the call when everyone hangs up at the end of the conversation. So the very first thing we ought to notice here is that the signaling between the phone and the call manager stops at the call manager. We see that the signaling from phone A never gets to phone B because they never talk to each other when they're trying to set up the call. However, when the call manager has set up everything that the call requires, we then see that the actual audio packets go directly from phone B to phone A. At that point, the call manager goes out of the equation, hence the reason why this arrow is going end to end and it's not stopping at call manager as the signaling um, traffic is. We see once again during the core teardown, we see once again the core manager intervenes and becomes part of the equation. So the core manager is basically like a moderator. So just a quick overview to not delay further. What we really need to understand is the question we need to be asking ourselves when we have a one-way audio problem is when the call was set up, did the call manager give the right IP address and the port number to the respective parties because during a call setup call manager basically says hello phone A give me the port number that you want to receive this call from for on because you have an incoming call and phone A says well I want to receive it on port Z for instance and then um, phone, phone B says I want to receive it on port A call manager then goes to each parties and said well this phone what he says he wants to receive it on port Z and guess what I'm gonna go and tell him that you want to receive your call on port A so once that communication has been exchanged between the two phones the two phones then start talking and when phone B for instance there decides to hang up he sends a signal to call manager and call manager then says hello phone A um, phone B doesn't want to talk to you anymore please hang up the call so now we've got the general story of how things flow. Let's look at the actual packets 
in Wireshark. Let's see it happen. Right, so I've got <coughs> phone A here and I've got phone B. Phone B at, at extension 2012 12 and phone A at extension 2012 11. Phone B's IP address is dot 24 and phone A is dot 3. Um, well, the main purpose of this Wireshark trace now, one thing that we need to keep it in mind is we're looking for expected behavior which is the reason why we did the quick overview so we're looking for expected behavior and when we do not see expected behavior we start to raise the red red flags so let's initiate a call and see if what we find is the expected behavior so um, before I start that the very first thing I want to do is I want to list um, my available ports so that Wireshark can at least you know um, get hold of those packets so that we can analyze them later so straight away I'm seeing packets being sent and received in this interface I'm going to start um, capturing packets there I'm going to go to phone B and I'm going to do the same right so I've now got packets being sniffed at both ends um, of the call um, if you noticed I've got a multicast music on hold stream on <clears throat> on the LAN and we can see it at 239.1.1.1 that is actually my multicast music on hold stream that is being um, um, generated by my call manager server which is why you're seeing this dot 55 IP address which is the call manager server having said that um, let's get the ball rolling so the very first thing I want to do I'm going to lift up line 1 on phone A and I'm gonna as we can see here there we can as you can hear we can hear the um, dial tone so I'm gonna quickly dial phone B that'll be 20 notice the dial tone stops um, 20 12 um, 12 phone B starts ringing Answer the call. Right, so I now have a call going on between um, both parties. So, what I'm now going to do is okay, we've generated some traffic, we're looking for expected behavior. Let's just see other aspects of you know expected behavior, like what happens during music on hold, for instance. Let's quickly see if we can generate that traffic so we can take a look, take a look at it later. So I put the call on hold. I suppose you're picking up the music on hold in the background. So we've confirmed that there is music on hold being played. And of course, phone B is the one listening to that uh, music on hold because of course, phone A put him on hold. So we resume the call from phone A's side. Calls now resumed, and I'm gonna end the call here. Oh, sorry, <coughs> um, I'll end the call. I'll stop that call there, and I'll, I'll stop the packet capture there. It was quite interesting that um, um, I accidentally pressed the wrong button, but that may actually yield some something very interesting. So, without further ado, let's quickly jump on a trace on phone A since this is where we initiated the call from now there are a lot of filterings that we could apply here but let's um, go straight at it and do something here go straight to telephony um, go to VoIP calls um, calls now listed we say select all we then put it in a flow graph um, so we've got we've got our graph here I've got it in colored but I'm just gonna toggle it so that when I select each particular um, packet okay so basically this is a graphical analysis of everything that transpired during the course of that call we have seen three different IP addresses here which of course are the three entities in the call we've got the first which is the 55 our call manager server we've got phone A 
at dot 3 and we've got phone B at dot 24. So we see at the beginning of the call, like I said, the signal is always between the call manager server and individual phones. So as we can see here, we've seen a lot of traffic going on between the call manager server and the phone, but nothing's happening here. We see this place is blank. So let's see what happens in the beginning. So far, we're getting expected behavior. Um, straight away, the very first packet, with, let's, let's expand this. <clears throat> Right, if you recall, the very f first thing I did was um, picking up line one. Of course, this is a client server um, architecture, so of course, the phone actually doesn't pretty doesn't know pretty much of what's going on in the network, so it always receives a lot of instructions from the call manager. So we'll quickly take a look at the very first instruction that's coming um, from the call manager. I'll push this to the background. A call set message. We can see it here highlighted so straight away the call manager tells the phone hey mr. phone you're not off hook of course we can see the source of the of the signal is from dot 55 to dot 3 and we can see that we're using a, um, a skinny client control protocol So of course, the very first thing when I pressed um, the first line, the very first thing we got was the dial tone. The next thing is start tone. We're going to find out what tone um, the call manager was telling it to start. We see it here: start tone inside dial tone because, of course, when we lifted up the the line, we should hear a dial tone. So that is good so far. The very next thing we did after we, we got the, the dial tone was that we pressed the button. And we can see here, it says that we dialed two as our very first button. So a call manager then says, oh, is that the case? So we see a next signaling message here, it says stop tone message. So we see here, it's basically telling to stop playing the, the dial tone because the call has now, um, well, the call setup is now, is now on course because we're now entering digits, okay. Soft key message, gonna jump straight after that because you know. <clears throat> so the very next thing we get, we get another keypad button message. Um, we can see it here, keypad button message, and straight away we're seeing that the keypad button someone has pressed zero, which of course was me. <laughs> um, we get another one one so we now have zero one two twenty one one which completes the call twenty twelve eleven <coughs> sorry twenty twelve twelve so the very next thing that happens here so far, we're still getting expected behavior. Call manager then sends uh, a signal back. We see here, we see the direction of the signal, dialed number message. And the message states that, well, phone A, you've now dialed 2012-12. Um, I've taken note of this, and I've given you a call identifier for this call, which is this value here. Call manager then tells, sends a new um, skinny message to the phone again and tells it well the call status is now proceed or proceeding or I'm trying to make the call for you and processing it and then the next message we get down the flow chart of the graph um, <clears throat> we get the alert tone which basically means well the phone at the other end is starting to ring okay so actually at this point, it would be nice for us to actually go over to the other end and see um, what the other phone is up to, because it's supposedly now ringing. 
so we're on dot 24 the IP address there <coughs> and um, I believe I've not done a graph for this that's not okay telephony VoIP calls select all flow let's push this to the background a little bit let's look for the part where actually um, so expand the skin client control protocol okay so the very first message we get from call manager going to phone B which is dot 24 once again once again we see no signal in here and we can see here the call the call manager tells the phone your call status is now ringing so the phone should start ringing of course we get the soft keys and we get a description here ringing then we get the next message from the call manager going to the phone which is set ring message by the way um, just to give you a quick uh, understanding of this it's always best when troubleshooting a uh, call signaling you can just for instance go into Google and you do something like H323 call flow um, if I was to do that now um, this PC is probably a bit slow here I've got SSCP so you can see all the expected behavior this is a very good reference point. you don't necessarily have to remember everything you just have to know about you just have to know how to go about finding out if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing for instance this is a call between an ATA and a call manager and you can see all the different signals that are being exchanged so you can follow that flow the same thing goes for um, H323 just say H323 call flow straight away I get diagrams and for instance you can see all the different messages so that's just a a way to go about doing it. don't necessarily have to remember everything you just have to understand it and know how to pull up um, the call flows whenever you need them so having said that so far we still seen expected behavior because what we're looking for is one way audio or no way audio and what we said was it's very important for when the call manager goes to phone A and says to phone A what IP address do you want to listen uh, on um, sorry, what port number do you want to use to listen on because you have an incoming call if phone A says I want to listen on port number A for instance then the call manager will go to phone B and tell phone B phone A is listening on port A so send the message there because that's how that's where he's going to be listening and then also he's going to ask the same question to phone B and phone B is probably going to say oh, I want to listen to this call on, on port B so call manager goes to phone A and says well phone B is listening on port B so therefore start sending your audio stream to phone B's IP address on port B meanwhile be listening to phone B as well so so the call managers just ask them basically what is your address to simplify things and exchanges the addresses so it's very important for those addresses that are exchanged um, for them to be the exact same address that each party has agreed to listen on so so that way when they do start sending packets we know that the packets are going in the right direction the, if a firewall now intercepts the traffic and causes those packets not to arrive at their respective destinations then we know that there's something along the along through the network that's causing problems so that's what we're trying to establish now let's get to the part where they start you know engaging in those discussions about you know, port numbers and IP addresses so we quickly go down to <coughs> soft key event so this is the part where you know I and I pressed answer soft key event from the phone you can see that going to the call manager the phone's busy telling the call manager I've pressed the answer button soft key event answer well call manager then says well if that's the case well that means well your call status is that you're not off hook okay um, set ring message so okay um, do, 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 do. well stop ringing if you've not picked up the phone because you're not off, off hook what's the point of ringing if, you're already, if you've picked up a call stop ringing so you can see the call manager basically guiding the phone trying to get it to do 
what it's supposed to do, you know, the expected behavior. Um, stop tone, bass contain, stop playing any tone that you're currently playing. And then the very interesting one, the very crucial one that is very crucial to what we're trying to figure out today is open receive channel. This is talking about the call manager is basically asking a question to the phone. What address do you want to listen to this call on? Phone A is trying to call you. What address do you want to give me so I can go and share that address with phone A? So you can see the question being asked from call manager open receive channel. And then you get another stop tone, basically reminding it to stop playing any tone that you might be playing at this current point in time. You get another message from call manager, call state message. And it's saying, well, you're not connected because obviously did see when it was ringing. So after it was ringing, when he not answered, the call is now officially connected, even though there's still a lot of like little negotiations going on in the background. But these things are done so fast that we just don't notice. So it tells it, well, you're now connected. Suck key event, same thing. So I'm just changing suck key. So, okay, so you now tells it start media transmission huh so the very first question the two first two questions you can see you can see the colors that they are marked in exactly the same colors so it's quite crucial for us to take note of this the very first question that the call manager asked the phone was what address do you want to use to listen and for some reason call managers come back to the phone and told it will start transmitting so let's look into the packet and see what the call managers tell the told the phone it's told the phone your remote the remote IP address that I want you to transmit to is 192.168.0.3 which is phone A and it's told it the remote port is 16394 so let's go back and see why call manager has come and informed phone B to speak to phone A on that on that port so this is at this point we, we are now really focused on you know one way audio because something has gone wrong in the signal let's confirm that let's prove it and so if the packets then do not arrive then we know that there's something on the network so let's go back to the other phone phone A and see if that was if phone um, A agreed on this port number with call manager so if we go back to phone A which is graph here so we scroll down start where so open receive channel so you can see a call manager asking exactly the same question to phone A and phone A has replied with an acknowledgement so we can see open receive channel act and the very first one call manager sent was open receive channel and he's now sent an acknowledgement and he said well my IP address open receive channel act status and it says well my IP address is one nine two zero, sorry one nine two one six eight zero dot three, and I want to listen to on port sixteen three nine four. Okay, so let's go back here. So sixteen three nine four. So that confirms it. So call manager got this information from A and just relayed it because now it's not trying to connect them. It's like you know, uh, matchmaking. All right. So let's go further back to phone B. So call manager has not told it to start transmitting to um, party A or phone A. So already um, phone B already knows how to communicate with phone A. He already knows the, the location. So th so phone B also responds and says, well, I am going to tell you what, what port I'm going to use to listen to this call on. It says open receive channel ACK. It sends it, you can see the direction to the call manager, and we see that it's told it that it wants to listen on 16388, of course, on its IP address.24. So let's find out if call manager actually went and told phone A that phone B wants to listen on 16388. So where we find that is here start media transmission for phone A where did where did 
right here start media transmission so I'll click on that and if you come here you notice that it's been selected here as well and the full details of which is what we're now seeing here so call managers received that information from phone B and it's come over to phone A and it's told phone A speak to phone B on 16 3 double eight so let's open phone B again just to be 100% sure you can see there 16 3 double eight so so far everyone is on track this is expected behavior okay so so at this point like I said the signaling is all over and the two phones know how to reach each other the call manager no longer has any business because of course it's only there to control control traffic has you know gone to the background and we're not talking about direct RTP audio stream because of course they're talking to each other so the RTP streams have to go in end to end and no need to necessarily go through the call manager um, so we've got an RTP stream here if you take note of the IP address we've got dot 24 to dot 3 we can see RTP coming from this direction and we can see RTP going the other direction so here we can confirm that there is full audio in this conversation the quality of the audio at this point in time we've not ascertained but we can find that later on but what we can see is that we've got audio coming going and coming um, in opposite directions because of course each audio stream is unidirectional so I send you send to me <coughs> so <coughs> so of course we can see here that during um, during the course of the call we got a signal from dot 55 which is the call manager to phone B and it told it to close receive channel which basically implies stop listening to the call okay so we now want to find out why it told it is this expected behavior but if you recall during the the test I did press the hold button so let's figure out if this is generated this um, issue or this signal so here you can see during the course we've got RTP here the conversation is ongoing then there's a soft key event message a soft key basically the soft key on the phone um, so I pressed the soft key and let's find out what the soft key is and it said soft key here we can see it's loud and clear is hold someone has pressed the soft key event of hold so the call has been placed on hold which is why the call manager told it to stop um, close receive channel here because stop listening to phone A because phone A has put you on hold obviously you have to f somehow start listening to the music on hold which is on a different IP address which is on that multicast IP address that I made mention of um, in the beginning so the very first thing that call manager has told this phone is close receive channel just min minimize this maximize I mean make life a bit easier don't want to make sure if it makes any difference um, close receive channel and then it says stop media transmission stop listening stop talking that's what it basically means and then s start multicast media reception basically telling the phone to start listening to the music on hold stream that has been streaming since it's been streaming since but the phone has not taken any notice of it the packet has been hitting the VLANs and everything but the phone has not taken any notice of it because it was not part of a conversation so call manager then tells it well now you have to take note of that multicast music on hold stream that has been streaming in the background ever since and it says the multicast IP address is 239.111 on this port number 16 384 so we're seeing the source of this message <clears throat> is from call manager and the destination is to phone B so that's an instruction coming from call manager and then of course the phone says well I'll do that it sends a multicast media reception ACK acknowledgement <clears throat> so during the course it then starts that is that point uh, that we start hearing the music on hold in the background and here we've got the stop 
music uh, multicast uh, media reception which is of course when at some point I'm gonna look for a soft key here from phone A where I pressed resume from phone yep so there we have a resume which is why we we stop listening to the multicast music on hold um, <clears throat> so we've got the stop tone basically telling to stop playing any tone that um, you may be playing at this point in time I'm just moving down to the bottom because we've pretty much covered everything we want to cover because we now understand the methodology which was the primary objective once again because the call was initiated taking off hold and resumed we get you know the open logical channels blah 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 all the way to the beginning then we get the RTP stream between both parties <coughs> and get it in the opposite direction soft keys and this is when I actually made a mistake that time when I didn't hang up the call properly and then we go down to multicast music on hold reception close channel so that basically kind of sums it up so what we wanted to do today so the main thing we want to take home is check if the multicast I'm um, sorry if the IP address on port numbers that were exchanged between both phones or if in, in some cases could be a gateway which is going to be the case in the next video update check that they both correspond to each other and both parties actually attempt to send the stream so if something then inter interferes in the communication along the way then we know that there's probably a firewall or an access list or something blocking the traffic for instance you might see RTP stream going from the phone but we don't see an RTP stream coming back something is obviously happen happening if we go to the other end we see that the other end is also trying to send RTP stream but we're not seeing anything coming from this phone and we know that this phone is sending obviously that is proof to the network team and the security team that there's something obviously going on in, the, in between these two devices because of course they don't root they're not rooting devices they're just blindly sending packets in that direction because of call managers told them this is the port IP this is the port and IP address send the traffic there someone's gonna be there waiting for you um, to to initiate the conversation <coughs> um, just another quick thing that you might find useful um, this is just a very if you recall when we're tracing this call um, what we did do is we just went to telephony and we did VoIP calls and we just um, pulled everything to a graph you could actually select it you could actually it's good to actually just know a few commands to just take you through the expressions as well um, <coughs> bear with me okay so if I open IP version 4 protocol We're going to create a quick formula. So IP dot destination is equals to one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot um, dot three. That's the last the command. They say dot fifty five. Um, so that creates for us a filter, and we apply that filter. You can see everything here is source. To destination the filter has been applied so um, let's quickly remove this just, um, IP dot address so we'll do an equals to double equals double equals to sign means equals to and we'll do um, 192.168.0. Um, I'll do a, um, I'll do a three here and what this basic I'll apply this Notice that it turns green. 
when we apply um, a proper rule um, so yeah so we've got here IP dot address equals to 192.168.24 what this basically implies is show me everything that contains an IP address of dot 24 which is why we can see you know source and destination alternating here so let's see let's see if we can further trim this down so we can then say and it's not just gonna contain that IP address but it must and also have SCCP no we won't see SCCP let me just say skinny skinny client control protocol see it's gone green we apply that rule you see everything is skinny um, you can easy to remember you say and more skinny so right now we've got all our signaling packets but what's happened to our audio it's a problem uh, so we go to and skinny or it could also be RTP real-time transfer protocol you apply that and straight away you begin to see our IT RTP packets so yes that concludes um, everything that we're gonna be doing today hope um, you found it enjoyable and I believe it's gonna set up a good foundation for what we're gonna be talking about over the next two updates thanks for your time guys Bye.